Is normal killing you? What do you mean by that, Doc? Well, have you been suffering for a long time with a chronic illness that medicine continually has told you all your labs that they run are normal? And so, because your labs are normal, they throw up their hands and say, we don't know, every time we test it's normal, it must be in your head, so try this antidepressant. Well, normal can kill you because, yes, there's a normal range, but there are nuances to that range that could show us, hidden in plain sight, what's wrong with you if you know how to read it. I'm Dr. John Bartimus, and I'm putting the pieces together to help you live a life at Optimal. Let's talk about a case where this happened. <clears throat> Let's talk about a real life case where normal was killing the person. This case was someone that has multiple diagnosed diseases. This person has seronegative rheumatoid arthritis. This person has a von Willebrand factor defect which affects their clotting ability. And this person has hereditary hemochromatosis which is an iron overload disease. Those things were all diagnosed and labs showed that and they're being treated. But even with those things being treated and the symptoms of those addressed, this person is still suffering from immune dysfunction, fatigue, and in brain fog and inability to perform to the level that they're used to. Over the years, the blood sugar has always looked normal according to their doctor, and their liver enzymes have always been lab high above the normal range in the 40s and 50s. So you can't blame that on the hemochromatosis anymore and the medical doctors kind of are at like, well, this is probably just your normal. The lipid panel has also been dysfunctional long term. And inflammatory markers like C-reactive protein are lab high. So what needs to be done in this case is yes, those known diagnosed diseases have been addressed and improved and need to continue to be improved, but there's these underlying symptoms of fatigue and brain fog that haven't been addressed, and sleep dysfunction as well. So in looking at this person's labs, the, the normals across the trends of all the labs that the doctors have run over the years, and even the labs I ran, the blood sugar markers were normal. The hemoglobin, A1C fell within the normal range at 4.3%. The C peptide, which is average insulin over three months, was in the normal range at 1.55. So these numbers to an untrained, unnuanced eye say normal. And so this person would be told your blood sugar is normal, your regulation is good. These are the average over the last three months of both blood sugar and insulin. You're good to go. The problem is when you dive into the nuance of it, these are not normal. Hemoglobin A1C, the range is less than 6% is what the normal range says. Because once you get above 6%, you start moving towards insulin resistance, prediabetes, and diabetes. So the normal range says, well, as long as you're below that, you're normal and your blood sugar is not a problem. Really? So what if this was 0%? Would that be normal? No way. The person would be in a hypoglycemic coma or dead, right? So there is a low end that is abnormal as well. From a functional perspective, 4.9, 5.4 is kind of where we want to be. So 4.3 is functionally low. If you break it down to what is the average fasting glucose over the three months using this percentage, it's 77 milligrams per deciliter. Well, that's a functionally low fasting glucose and can result in hangry type symptoms. So if you go too long without eating, you might get shaky, irritable, lightheaded, headaches, nausea, anxiety. It's different for everybody. But it's like the Snickers commercial, right? You're a dragon until someone throws you Snickers and then you're you again. 
So this indicates abnormal blood sugar regulation on the too low end on average. The C-peptide is in the normal range but would be functionally high from the way that I look at it and showing that, hey, over time she's actually had insulin levels that are higher than we want to see. So what this total pattern, well, excuse me, so when they're higher than we want to see over time, that's more of an insulin resistant type spectrum. So symptoms there would be, I eat a meal and I need to take a nap after, I'm tired. You may see on the lipid panel that triglycerides climb up and you may see liver enzymes climb up and we're seeing this in this person. So we have evidence of hangry symptomatology, we have evidence of, of insulin resistance symptomatology, which are two opposites, right? Well, this would be called mixed dysglycemia. And dysglycemia is a fancy term for your blood sugar is not well regulated. Mixed because we have a mix of symptoms of too low and insulin resistance. Well, this leads to, this can lead to variable symptoms throughout the day. In one moment of the day, this person may feel hangry and jittery and need a fix, and then they get their fix and now they feel sleepy. And so this up and down of blood sugar can lead to cortisol release because cortisol can jump into the picture and try and regulate the blood sugar, but cortisol is our stress response hormone and can drive fight or flight, which can suppress immunity and sex hormone function. High blood sugar over time or high insulin over time can lead to inflammation and we see inflammatory markers. We have high CRP, we have high liver enzymes, we have lipid panel that's dysfunctional. So chronic inflammation over time can drive fatigue, contribute to the autoimmune processes and chronic infection that are also part of this person's picture. So the point of the video is, yes, there are things that medicine has seen and addressed because they're obvious, but there's still a quality of life and function that is lacking in this person and to, to get the rest of the quality back and to reach optimal, we have to be able to look at the normals and nuance them out and figure out in this person, is this relevant, is this contributing? And if we optimize this person's blood sugar, will they reach the level of performance that they desire? This is what functional medicine does. It sees the obvious, but then it also goes and finds the hidden stuff. It does the detective work and the nuancing to find out, hey, Yes, these known diseases are here, but then look at these physiologic mechanisms in the background that even though you've got improvement in the known diseases, if we could clean up this background non-obvious stuff, we could really optimize this person and get them to a level of life that they're loving. So if this is you, if you're suffering chronically from normal, find a functional medicine practitioner that can do the detective work and the nuancing out of your labs to find what's hidden in plain sight.